Welcome to 10 Things to Know About the Privacy Sandbox on Android. I'm Rob Clifford, a Developer Relations Engineer on the Privacy Sandbox for Android team, and I'd like to introduce my colleagues, Aaron Walsh and Chris Schmerling. Today, we're going to be talking about 10 things you should know about the Privacy Sandbox for Android. You can see the topics we will cover are broken up into three categories. A recap to talk about what we've achieved so far, a chat about what's happening now in the Privacy Sandbox, and lastly, how to get involved today and be on the cutting edge of these exciting changes to Android. In case you're not already acquainted with the Privacy Sandbox for Android, here's a brief overview of what we've introduced so far. Privacy Sandbox is an initiative across Google to elevate standards for user privacy while preserving the robust product ecosystems, starting with Chrome and now available on Android. In 2022, we announced we were working on bringing the Privacy Sandbox approach to Android. Our efforts on Android have been focused on improving user privacy and enabling effective, personalized advertisements that allow developers to continue providing free experiences for billions of people around the world. This project consists of four different proposals, topics, protected audience, SDK runtime, and attribution reporting, each of which work together to ensure a better user experience while continuing to support the industry. The Privacy Sandbox for Android has passed several major milestones, including many developer preview releases, launching into beta, and working with industry partners to drive adoption and solicit feedback on release tools and announced plans. Number one, in our engagements with industry partners, we have been receiving a great deal of useful feedback, which has helped to shape our approach as we move closer to industry-wide adoption. Responsibility sits at the heart of Rovio's technology strategy. Thus, we really appreciate Android working with the industry to raise the bar for privacy while continuing to support a healthy app ecosystem. Unity is excited to collaborate with Android to take a leap into the next era of privacy-centric digital marketing on mobile. Being able to navigate the evolving landscape with Privacy Sandbox allows Unity to experiment and iterate on how to drive success for our customers, while at the same time, keeping user data safe and secure. This aligns with our approach at Unity, as we are often the initial step in a game developer's journey to building their business. The Android team is being very thorough with regards to delivering solutions that meet industry use cases and providing valuable feedback as we move towards beta testing and beyond. At AppsFlyer, we believe that privacy is an essential value and as such have built all of our products with privacy at their core. We've been working closely with Android's team to enhance the level of privacy throughout the ecosystem while still providing robust solutions for marketing measurement. We're impressed with the strides and commitment Android has made as our partner for privacy-centric measurement in the short time since the Privacy Sandbox on Android was announced. Check out our blog for more quotes from our industry partners. As we look back on how far we've come with the Privacy Sandbox for Android, it is important also to look ahead to how we can continue to build towards our goal of a privacy-first future on Android. And I'm gonna hand it over to Aaron to talk about highlights and our current and future plans for rolling things out. Thanks, Rob. Now that we know what the Privacy Sandbox is, let's talk about some exciting new features we've released. We have begun releasing beta versions of the Privacy Sandbox alongside our developer previews. The beta program integrates with stable Privacy Sandbox APIs for testing on a limited number of Android 13 devices in production. We recommend that you try out developer previews first to use the latest Privacy Sandbox features, then graduate to beta for a stable integration. Before you can try either version, you must go through the enrollment process. Check out the Google I.O. talk getting started with attribution reporting to learn more. Number two, you can access the beta releases through the Privacy Sandbox Jetpack library. Using Jetpack is the preferred way to call the Privacy Sandbox APIs. A useful feature of Jetpack is backwards compatibility. If you use Privacy Sandbox through Jetpack, you can build it once for the latest platform versions without needing to worry about breaking older devices. It's automatical. To use the ad services Jetpack library in your app, simply declare a dependency on the Privacy Sandbox Jetpack library in your build.gradle file. And then at runtime, use the obtain function to check for availability. Obtain will return null if the Privacy Sandbox is not available. To see the Privacy Sandbox Jetpack library in action, check out our samples on GitHub. Number three, SDK extensions. You can also access beta releases through SDK extensions. 
SDK extensions are a new mechanism for accessing APIs of features delivered through modular system components outside of major Android releases. To use an SDK extension to access the privacy sandbox, first, you need to check which SDKs include the APIs you want to use. You can check this on our API documentation at the top right of the page. Then, you need to make sure your app compiles against the listed SDK level or above. Privacy Sandbox also requires Ad Services extensions. You can declare these in your app's build.gradle file. Then, at runtime, you can check whether the Privacy Sandbox beta is available on your device by using the SDK Extensions API to check for your Ad Services version. If the check returns the minimum level or above, you're ready to use the Privacy Sandbox beta on your device. Number four, SDK runtime. In case you've missed our previous announcements and proposals, one of the most significant changes to the Android development workflow coming with the Privacy Sandbox is the SDK runtime. The SDK runtime is a dedicated runtime environment that aims to improve the user privacy experience by separating ads-related SDKs from main app code through sandboxing them into a separate runtime process and restricting how the SDK accesses data. This helps to ensure that only information which is deemed appropriate is shared from the application to the advertisers for ads personalization. Number five, SDK Runtime Shim Library. As part of the initial release of the Privacy Sandbox for Android Jetpack Library, we've introduced the SDK Runtime Shim Library, a toolkit designed to minimize impact to app developers who will be using SDKs that are inside the runtime. The Shim library will allow SDK developers to provide a configured iBinder object that can be used in app to remotely call SDK APIs, even though they are in different processes. Number six, cross-app and web measurement. A new feature of the attribution reporting API is the ability to measure across app and web. That means if a user clicks an ad in an Android app, then makes a purchase in a mobile browser, the API can attribute the conversion made in the mobile browser to the ad shown in the app. It also works the other way around. You can learn more by watching Getting Started with Attribution Reporting. Number seven, Simulation Library. If you are working on your integration with the Attribution Reporting API, we have a new tool to help you test your measurement strategy without the need to have a full solution in production. The Measurement Simulation Library is a script that you can clone from our GitHub page and run locally. In this script, you can enter currently existing measurement data, and it will return that same data as if it were reported by the Attribution Reporting API. You can use the simulation library to refine your privacy limits, aggregation key structures, batching strategies, and more. By comparing the measurement data you already have with that same data as if delivered from the Attribution Reporting API, you can gain valuable insights on the impacts the API will have on your data and how to optimize your parameters. Number eight, Topics Classifier Jupyter Notebook. If you're an app developer who would like to see how the Topics API will categorize your apps, we've put together an easy way for you to do that. Instead of needing to build a sample app using the API, you can use our Topics Classifier Jupyter Notebook that you can access through Google Colab in your browser. This enables you to see how different combinations of app data will change the resulting topics returned by the API, so you can start planning to ensure your app is accurately classified. To learn more about how to get involved with all of these new features, I'll throw it over to Chris. Thanks for that recap on what we've been working on, Aaron. Now, you must be wondering, as an ad tech or app developer, how can I get involved in all of this? Number nine, the Privacy Sandbox is in beta, so the time to start is now. Here's how you can think about getting yourself production ready. You can begin by designing solutions, incorporating the Privacy Sandbox APIs relevant to your business needs. Some important use cases such as waterfall mediation and app install negative filtering are currently supported, with more coming in future beta releases. You can always access our latest features in developer preview. Then, you can plan to do some real-world testing. In order to understand the impact and results of using the Privacy Sandbox APIs, it's possible to run them in parallel with your existing solutions. For example, 
Why not kick off a select ads auction to see what ad would be selected while continuing to serve ads as you do today? Finally, engage with your other ad tech partners. The mobile ad space is an ecosystem and everybody needs to play their part to make the whole thing run smoothly. Talk to your partners and see what they are doing with the privacy sandbox today. Number 10, are you an app or game developer who shows mobile ads? Good news, you don't have much to do. Reach out to the mobile ad SDK providers you use to see what they are doing and let them know that user privacy is important to you. And of course, make sure to update to their latest SDK when they roll out releases that include their Privacy Sandbox integration. To help get you started, check out the Privacy Sandbox sample app repository on GitHub. Based on your feedback, we have begun building a sample project that shows how different type of ad tech companies can work together to build a solution across publisher and advertiser applications or keep up to date with the latest developments by following the documentation on developer.android.com. We are always looking for feedback on our proposals and we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing what you build in the Privacy Sandbox.